A Funny Taste in Music with Andrew Bird. Hello, welcome to A Funny Taste in Music. How the devil are you? I haven't spoke to you for a while. Um, we've got a great guest today, Jessica Foster She is one of my absolute favourite comedians. She is one of them where I've said to her for ages she should be in sitcoms. She's like a one man, one woman, one person, one human sitcom on stage. That's what she is. She's a she should be she's a brilliant actress on stage. She's so funny, um, and I've I thought like she's one of them girls that you'd be mates with at school. I thought if she went to school with me, I'd be, I'd have been mates with her. Probably would have liked the same music. So I was interested in what kind of music she'd like. So this is a great episode. We both make each other look foolish on many occasions with our collective ignorance on on music in general we don't claim to know loads about music i want to get that straight just like it you can tell we both like it just know very little about it so it's a really good episode um please go and uh to the patreon uh, become a patreon of this podcast and go through the old episodes i mean like just coming up now russell howard has got a new special out on netflix and i supported him on tour and i can tell you it's a great show so watch that and if you think, what, are you two mates? Yeah, we're mates. Go back and listen to the episode that I did with him on this. Brilliant mates, eh? Uh, so listen to that and go to the Patreon and uh, listen to the Spotify playlist. That will be coming along with this. That's always really good. And um, I hope you enjoy it. Here's Jess Foster A funny taste in music. The interview next. Here's one I've been asking people, music related. Yeah. Um, have you gone, because you know people have got their first gig ever, first ever live gig, first album, all of that. Yeah. Now there's a new one. First Ooh. post-lockdown live music gig. Have you done one? <gasps> um, so it's probably going to have to be um, at a festival I did in the summer, because that counts, right? Yeah, I saw bands at that. Yeah, so I uh, I did Latitude. I didn't see any music, which is really bad. Um, oh, actually, I think I did. <laughs> I don't know who I saw, and they weren't very good. So we, so that's no use. Um, but at Green Man, um, I caught a tiny bit because they were on at nearly the same time as me of Self Esteem, and that was awesome. Oh, I don't know them. That's a good name. Yeah. It's um, Rebecca Taylor. She's got an album out now called Prioritise Pleasure that's getting five stars in everything. She's absolutely slaying it. Um, But she had an album out before, which I love just as much, um, called Compliments, Please. And she was used to be um, in a two-part band called Slow Club that were around for a long time. Yeah, and then... So is self-esteem Rebecca Taylor on her own? Yeah. And I just said I don't know them. Hello, Granddad. Well, they they are called <laughs> they are called self <laughs> they are called self esteem, even though it's just her. But she does have like backing dancer singers. No, no, it still stands. Yeah, I've just humiliated myself. You've, sorry, buddy, for you. All right, um, you with that. So, how much did you see of it, though? Did you stand titchy back bit, for a couple of songs? Absolute titchy bit. Yeah, exactly. And then yeah. ran to my gig. Yeah. Yeah, it's bad um, that when you do a gig, think of all the things at a music festival. When well, you it's do literally the only band I'd heard of as well at the whole festival that I wanted to see, and they were on at the same time as me. I was livid. Oh, yeah. yeah and right. I was doing when, 45 minutes, which is a long set for a festival gig for a comedian. So I was like, oh, crumbs. That is brutal, that is. Why even 45? It wasn't in a big tent, was it? Was it in a yeah, small, intimate tent? big tent. Well, medium? I don't know. How many... About two, three hundred in there. Oh, that's oh, that's, that's not bad. Quite, that's medium. Yeah, I thought it was medium. going to be one of them big thousand seat echoey, no, no echoey, thank you. not even seats, thousand people on grass. Yeah, on wee weed on grass. Oh, they're yeah. hor- they're horrific, and then you don't see a band because you think you will, and then you have such a demoralising gig. You, yeah. you you can't be you can't be in, within a four mile radius of it. You have to leave immediately. Yeah. <laughs> and you know it's going to take about an hour to get to your car. You can't remember where you parked your car. Yeah. I've done that at a music festival. Oh. I, the, at Green Man, I have, it was just me and my son, which is 
a brutal combination. It's a very small child and me with no help for him. Um, and when we parked, I was like, oh, great. Well, I'm next to a really... I just thought I was next to a really distinctive pylon, basically. And then um, it was only when you go back to find the car for the first time ever, and I'd left... <laughs> this is... Don't call anyone. But I'd left my child sort of unattended. We sort of made friends with the tent next door to us. And I just had to run back to get like one last rucksack of stuff. And on the run back, I was like, oh, great. There's one of these pylons every five cars. I don't know how I didn't see that. Like I'd, I'd chosen the least yeah. distinctive thing to park by. And then yeah. also I quite often do that thing of going, right, well, I'm next to a red Ford Focus. As if that car can't move. <laughs> oh. They're very much designed for moving, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, it's exactly what they're made for in the end. I did that. I yeah. did that at um, Witchwood Festival, which is Lovely. Oxfordshire. Yeah. So it's a, I think it's about 30, 40 minutes from my house. And there's no, there's just nothing better than doing a gig within an hour away from your house. Yeah. Just the joy Heaven. of getting there and thinking, oh, I'm going to be home 40 minutes after this. And yeah. walk Lovely. into my car and then I couldn't find my car. It took me about an hour. <laughs> to find a car <laughs> he could oh, have walked home yeah I was, yeah. Oh, I was furious I love but, um, it so that was your first that's my first of... one but the first thing I've bought tickets for but it's not yet is um, I've got tickets to see uh, Anna B Savage in January at oh. King's Place in London because I heard a song on the radio that I thought was amazing and so really you're going you're going to see someone live based on one song yeah that's a big call it's a big big. call isn't it do you do if you do do you do that a lot um have you done that before a lot not a lot haven't you it was a really good song no i don't think so well i feel like (laughs) it better be because i've got about another hour to fill now yeah well they've got an album out and then i found out um that she that this song is off a little EP and I love the EP. If she does all the songs off that, I'll be well happy and I don't care what's on the album. It's called Since We Broke Up. She's got the most extraordinary voice. She sounds like she's... I hope she never hears this. She sounds like she's an older, much older lady, potentially of a different no. race. <laughs> and then she's like, like... She looks like about a 12-year-old little blonde white lady and you're like, oh, what? And... um. Well, that in itself is fascinating, but also now I've listened to a bit of her stuff. Her songs are really funny, like really, really funny. Are they? Um, are they intentionally funny or yeah. really, really good observations? Really, really good observations. Yeah, I love but that. They, she must know that it's funny. Like this song called "It's Called Since We Broke Up," and it. I think the nature of how she sings is like there's an earnestness to it. It's, it's like quite stirring, quite moving, this incredibly deep voice. And then it's sort of, it becomes really upbeat and basically she's just really chuffed that she's <laughs> single. And I don't know how to put it any other way than that. But it's, and then it's very, her lyrics are very everyday, but the music, the style is very profound. And that really no, right, jars, yeah. like it's really nice. She's got a whole song about how she's a bit hairier now than she used to be. <laughs> but it's really, but just like stylistically, it's like, doo, doo, doo. it's quite Anthony and the Johnsons, right? But the lyrics are like, I've got a moustache, you know, oh, really that. good. It's a bit sort of, it's a bit of an obvious example, but like the Smiths, the way the Smiths is all really yeah. melodic, and then oh. um, Morris's lyrics are all really gritty and day to day. Yes, yeah, Love yeah, that. yeah. Um, or oh, Divine Comedy, that kind of vibe, yeah. yeah. Elbow, yeah. elbow, yeah, lovely, big, lovely stirring example. music, and then just uh, working yeah. my fingers to the nub. <laughs> oh, a lovely lyric. You, you can almost, you can. I don't know if it's a, as a comedian, but sometimes you hear lyrics and you can almost sense the moment they thought of that and went, "Oh, that's going in." Yeah, working my fingers to the nub. Oh, that's lovely going in. Nub. They'll have thought of that elbow will when he was just drifting up. Johnny Elbow will have had that idea as he was drifting off to sleep, won't he? Either drifting off to sleep or shower. Yeah. That's why I have a lot of stuff. Yeah. I'd I don't think I have as long enough sleep. showers post having a child. Drifting off to sleep last night and only just remembered it. I, know, I think this is a potential new bit. Yeah. Michael Carrick, new, he's a uh, caretaker 
manager for Man United. Lovely. He's not got many games, but his first game as like manager, you got to decide: right. do you go tracksuit or suit? Yeah. As a manager, and I was just thinking, what other job do you get to do those two extremes? <laughs> There's no other job where you can go tracksuit or suit. Yeah. <laughs> I was laying in bed and I thought, oh, that's surely there's something in that. <laughs> anyway, anyway, um, I'm just trying stuff on you now. Oh, really, I feels, really like that. Yeah, that and grubby. now my brain is whirring between yeah, tracksuit what other and suit. Funeral director. Oh, can't you oh, got to go suit? No, you cannot. You cannot rock uh, that. Hang on, hang on. Uh, leisure centre lifeguard. You're wearing a suit. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Both going to sink in that. <laughs> yeah, you can barely move your arms. Yeah, but um, so you've been, you sat, I, I, honestly, I don't think I've ever, I've got into bands based off of just one song and thought, well, I'm definitely going to love this band forever. Yeah. But I don't think I've ever booked tickets to see someone based on one song. Do you know what, as well, though, I think I've had this, I've, I've had too many times where I've fallen in love with a band and then gone, oh, I can't. I've, there's no way. I've got no way of seeing them live, especially when you do work evenings. Like, yeah. and you look at that, you see, oh, they're touring. But I, I do like quite weird bands, and they won't do huge tours, and they'll just do big cities, and you're not free for any of them. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So I was like, grab the opportunity. Yeah. Well, as soon as you see they're touring, and you look through, and you go, ah, oh, Saturday, ah, oh, Friday, ah, oh, Saturday. Yeah. yeah. Like I've just looked at um, Noel Gallagher's touring in June, and look through. Right. Two Sundays, I'm like, oh yes, no, <clears throat> Good yes, boy. no. You know, you know the score. Good Do a boy. Sunday, yeah. Yeah, I am. Um, well done, happy for you. Thanks. I am. Um, yeah. So I think I've got. I got into uh, DMAs. I'm, I've mentioned them thousands of times. I'm obsessed with them. You Off can of have one to song. You DMAs. Know oh, that's a band, is it? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> You Who's the old lady did. now? Who's no. the old lady now? I thought um, you. I thought you were going to tell me about a, like a new legal high. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that helps it's, you enjoy music. Oh, it does sound like that. You're right though. No, no. Yeah. I think I think, you're, I think you're forgiven for that. That's fair. Okay. That's fair. I dropped a couple of DMAs, <laughs> and then some of DMAs. <laughs> then I, I did have a natural high when I saw them. To be fair. <laughs> okay. So, What's um, their? What are they like? Uh, well, that I've spoke. I had that We've where I, they supported. This. They supported Liam Gallagher on right. tour, and they come on the comes on the radio. This is the band that's supporting Liam Gallagher. So obviously, I'm like, well, I'm going to give them a listen. Yeah. And by the first chorus, I'd made up my mind. I am going to love this band for Get years it. and years to come. Probably forever, I'll be listening to this band. I just Get it. just straight away like like what you just said then some people say oh, I mean I quite like that band or I got into that band you just said when you fall in love with a band that's what it is yeah. isn't it it is love it's the same thing you get a massive oxytocin rush I mean it takes a sort of sheen off romance but that's what love is it's a chemical reaction from your brain it's not the permanent thing we've painted it as <laughs> but, but, but yeah it, it, yeah you do you have a physiological reaction I think and that's yeah. what's well yeah then you then you go through a... that's why music's amazing that's why someone's an absolute fucking monster if they don't love any music yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we've had a few of them on this. Okie dokie. Yeah. Well, that's your poor booking policy. Well, no, no, it's, yeah. it's, I find it fascinating. I've avoided <laughs> most of them since. It? I've got a podcast about eating, and every now and again I've managed to somehow book someone who's like, yeah, just see it as fuel. Um, I have fuel twice a day, and then I just have something yellow for dinner, and you're like, oh, fuck me, this is going to be a short episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I had to, I had to, um <laughs> Uh, Sean Walsh, who listens to nothing but Blink-182 and never has. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> but I couldn't help but respect him for it. Yeah, fair play. You found the thing you like and you're having nuggets for tea every night. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. the food into equivalent. Into 50s, 60s, yeah. But yeah, it is, like falling, it is like falling in love, getting into a band, because you're like, Who, who's it? Who is this? Who is this? And then yeah. you want to find out everything about them. Everything's yeah. fascinating. You Google them. Where are they from? What do they look like? All of that kind mm. of thing. And then there's a sort of phase of you get, you sort of get used to each other. And then you get complacent. Oh, I haven't listened to that album for years. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and then and you, you know, can and you come back to them. Really rekindle things, can't you? Yeah, they, then there's anniversaries. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> anniversaries of you know Nebworth and stuff like that. Oh, lovely! Absolutely lovely. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, but I've never gone to see a band live. So you sound like you're. You're really, really into music. You're going to see bands no. a lot at the moment. No, well, I don't know. Yeah, I suppose for me, for a comedian, with with a comedian's free evening times, yeah, I'm trying to up my game on that front. I think I've had too many sort of ones where I've gone, oh, I don't think I'll ever see them. or But also, I don't know, I, I think I only started to enjoy it as a grown-up. It's a bit like, for me, like I've, ne- I've always loved music, but going to live gigs, one... To be fair, I suppose the privilege of having the money to and it not being a case of going, oh, fuck me, I can't afford 50 quid and the money to go into town to do that. But um, I think there's also just an appreciation factor, like just you age into being able to appreciate a good view or a bit of seaside, like all the stuff you just have to get old before you can really love. And actually just sort of like, I suppose having as well, getting old enough not to have it... and any if or many inhibitions about like just letting yourself really enjoy music unabashedly um a very shit dancer so yeah, a lot too. of the times you'd be going out f- to music that's for dancing first time i ever enjoyed dancing at a live gig was only a couple of years ago and i'd say it's probably if not the best experience i've ever had at a live gig it's one of them um lizzo Oh, oh no! Don't tell me you don't know who Lizzo is. Don't know who Lizzo is. What? No, Birdie, this is embarrassing. Now you don't know who Lizzo is. No, I'm I'm very prepared to be embarrassed on this. It's happened oh before. Oh God! No, I don't. Are you serious? Yeah, you, I Are love you how upset me? you sound. That makes me think I'm definitely I... in the wrong on this one. <laughs> oh my crumbs! Oh She's my crumbs. like won loads and loads. Of, she's like a massive she's like Madonna famous is she? how do I not know this? 11.18 million Instagram followers hang on hang on hang on you don't know that off the top she's of your like head she's like more Googling famous yeah, to prove how wrong I am. she's more famous than she's like have you heard of Cardi B? have yes. you heard of Madonna? yes no, I know of her and I do not like her not a fan of Madonna right. Lizzo Lizzo, I may, she's I won. I've heard that name. Uh, Where she? F- <laughs> well, she won three Grammys know. just last year. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love the way you're googling the show. And use facts yeah. at how ignorant I am. I, I you could. I believe how bad I am. But so she, she received eight nominations for Grammys and won three of them. I mean, yeah, sounds like I should know who that is. Yeah. So she unbelievable. You'll have, I bet you've heard some of her music. Yeah, I must have. More important. She's got than, some absolute bangers. Yes, yeah, sorry. I danced my little socks off. More important than any of her Grammys, she made Foster Hugh dance. Yeah. So talk yeah. me through that then. Who and who in are you front with? of other comedians? Wow. Uh, I was with um, Sarah Pascoe, comedian, little known one. Comedian, um, yeah. yeah, quite new. Um, yeah. Quite green, yeah. She will. I think she'll get quite funny eventually, and probably do quite well. She has to um, find a voice, yeah. Yeah, just sweat. <laughs> yeah. Um, another one um, called Lou Sanders. Yes. And um, and then when we were there, we bumped into uh, all sorts actually of other people. Alison Spittle. Um, uh, yeah. It. But what I loved about it was um, so many women there on their own. Yeah. Uh, just absolutely giving it yaldi, just going bonkers. We it sh- it was like it was like being part of a really joyful, judgment free, shame free cult <laughs> for a night. And every age was represented. There's little old nanas there. There was teenagers. Um, it was extraordinary. It was wow. absolutely amazing. Yeah, it was at um, Kentish Town O2, which I hadn't oh. been to before as well because I'm South London. So before I went there, well, and still I think Brixton Academy is still my favourite venue for watching well, live music. Well, <clears throat> if you live in South London, you, you yeah. go to Brixton. And you know, I used to live in Streatham Brixton. and Ballam. Oh, so Brixton was well easy. Problem with Brixton, like 
The great thing about it is it slopes so nice and gradually everyone has a good view. Yeah, such a clever, clever design. Yeah, it's brilliant. <laughs> Perfect venue. Bad thing about it, right uh, opposite a massive weather spoons. Yeah, the yeah. bee, the bumblebee or something like that, isn't it, yeah. that one? Absolute shit tip. So you think, this is nice, this. This is really nice. This is good. You're yeah. watching the support band. Lovely, lovely, lovely atmosphere. Nice. And then there's this rush of people that have just necked three pints <laughs> and just crush into you. And you think, oh, no, it's full of scum now. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a really big shift really late on, isn't it? And you, every yeah. time you fall for it, you go, I won't fall for this again. I'm ready. Oh, no, no, it seems all right this time. <laughs> I tell you what, this is bad. This is how um, yeah. you're talking about enjoying it uh, when you're older, enjoying music. I've got to be yeah. honest. I went to see DMAs just the other week. That's why I'm, I'm still on. I'm still on a natural Here high. Again about the old O2 Birmingham. Yeah, I love the O2, the, the little ones. Birmingham, yeah. uh -oh. perfect size. <gasps> I'm on the balcony. Now, first thing, right? I have literally now. I know. I know parking pretty well in Birmingham, yeah. so I was confident of me parking. I got to, I honestly, I parked literally at the stage door. Oh, parked birdie. at the stage door, three after half six. Walk in. <sighs> this was a moment where we were older. I was with with Kat, and my wife, and uh, yeah. <laughs> there was a moment where that sat parking on... story, that bit about parking, that's erotica for comedians. Oh uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm. I'm and buzzy and I'm thinking I yeah. I'm really worried that the gig's not going to top this <laughs> and then, and I, I'm serious as well and I've told Katka we're not paying to park I'm finding somewhere to park in Birmingham and we're walking I know you're serious I know and it's a bit serious. cold so you might want to put on yeah. a big coat I don't want you getting cold walking a mile and a half from park. so we've parked out the back door and she's yeah. got a massive duffel coat on so we're sat down on the balcony in DMAs. It, it was, it was. I've never seen. I don't think I've seen mosh pitting like it. It was madness. Right. Young, proper youngsters. It, it made you think yeah. of that is a. If you were at that age, that would be your band. You could sort of. You were yes. kind of jealous of them. You know that thing of music was better in my day. I was looking at them, thinking, no, no, they've 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 got a band that stands up with any band here. If you're young, if you're Get nineteen. In. So I'm watching them, and there was a girl on somebody's shoulders in the mosh pit and she took her top off and just had a bra on. Oh a cat cut, my wife looked at me and went, when I was 19, that would have been me. Look at me now. <laughs> Sat on a balcony in a coat. In a duffel coat? In a coat. She sat there in a coat. <laughs> Just looking furious at how her life has turned out and me still going, we've, we've parked literally four yards ago. <laughs> It was awful, but then when we left, and then we did, then we did that thing of they've done the they've done the encore. So the encore means yeah. you start edging towards an exit. So yeah, you still yeah, you watch yeah, yeah. you don't leave yeah, before you, the you gig know, finishes. No, yeah. no, 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 don't leave before the gig finishes. But no. just edge, edge, just edge towards the exit. Edge. Yeah. So we're That's at the when exit. you get your duffel coat on. We're out. We're in the car. We're at the roundabout yeah. and back. People, people are still leaving. You can still oh. people are still coming out the door. Logistically, you've had an incredible gig there. Oh, it's a lit. <laughs> one of the, the very best. Yeah. So, did uh, did Pasco and everyone dance? We did all you just danced. lose yourself and you're off. We all lost ourselves. We were all off. I got sweaty. Like I got gy post gym sweaty. Everyone did in there. It was extraordinary. And then we wow. all piled into the, any nearby pubs afterwards. It was, and it just was like the f sense of camaraderie like community it was awesome yeah, yeah and, that was a real banger and you've got that thing of your ears still ringing a bit yeah and you, yeah. Can't, you can't quite hear each other but you're like yeah yeah it, oh. yeah it was mad and there was so much to talk about like she's lizzo like is uh, as much as you haven't heard of her like a it's <laughs> hugely like famous like american star now but she used to be homeless she got a scholarship as a flautist to some big university and that was sort of like her recovery from like financial horror or whatever she's like a proper rags to riches story and then in the middle of she does like she's like big like big fat black woman right she's gorgeous and she's also an awesome dancer so she's like it's all very like big and poppy and catchy and then in the middle of it she just gets a fucking flute out 
Whoa, what? what? And does a, yeah, she's a flautist. She's like an amazing classical flute player. So she gets out and it's like <laughs> in the middle of this pop concert. Bits like that. We, I mean, that stuff when you got out was like, wow, that needs discussion. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, really brilliant. Yeah, in the pub, the bit where she got the flute out. Did you see the flute? Yeah. How I mean, often? How often do you get a band? You yeah. just don't get that with Westlife. Yeah. None of them get a flute out. Then none of them are getting their flute out. No. And they <laughs> are sort of are known for having a sit down in them for the majority of their gig. Oh yeah, of course. She's but, dancing while she's fluting, Lizzo. So I, that's the other thing I like. I like. You know, it can be just a band that you just love for the music and you know nothing about them. But I like it when there's a band as well that, or a musician that you get into and then you Google yeah. them like you clearly have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there's a backstory. You're like, what? She was, she was, she was financially ruined. Yeah. She's come back from that. <laughs> yeah. She was homeless. And then she got so good at the flute, someone gave her some money to not be homeless. Um, yeah, but sometimes it's a fib, isn't it? Do you, I me- do you remember that guy C6 Steve that basically pretended to be an old hobo? And it oh, turns out it's absolutely that. fine. Yeah, it's bullshit. Really? Yeah, it turns out oh. it's just it's like a character. He's he's always been absolutely fine for money in the end. Oh, I thought. Oh, I thought that it was. Um, didn't he have? Uh, he was really ill, and he was pretty much on his deathbed. And his wife said, "You know, you need to record some of your songs." Or he recorded his songs for his wife, so she's got them just for her. I thought it was all outed as being absolute bollocks. So was that? It's just bollocks? like a brilliant backstory. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, no, I've got to Google that. Yeah. I really got into him because of that as well. Well, he's got an awesome voice. Who cares what his backstory is? I don't think the problem's the, the artist, generally, when they, when it comes out as being dog shit. There'll have been some PR cunt, excuse my French, who's told them to ham no, no, up some fine. dog shit backstory. What, what, other word, what other word can you put after <laughs> PR know. other than that? <laughs> 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 but... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, no, you're right. It will be. It will be. It will be some some of that. I mean, in, in stand up, the closest you get oh to that God. is really that someone's lied about their age slightly. Ah, well, you do get PR people in stand up who tell people, "Well, you, the show's all fine being funny, but you will need a sad bit." <laughs> yeah, and you will need, even though you're, oh, you're from the countryside, you need to pretend that you were skint. Um, yeah. I, I really, I really, I really like John Bishop, but I love that bit of him saying, "You know." I was I was on my ass. I was doing gigs to twelve people. It's like you had a really good job, John. What you want yeah. about? <laughs> and then and then, it showed, then he had clips of his his um his uh like his house and stuff, and it showed he's got a massive garden. I'm like you weren't skint, John. <coughs> but um anyway, but the main thing is incredible comedian. Yeah. Um, gig with him recently. Annoying. Oh, right. Annoying. He's not gigged in a year and a half. He's done oh, seven gosh. gigs in a year and a half, and he did an hour of absolute flawless stand up. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, can't yeah, stand yeah. the man because of it. Yeah, oh, it is infuriating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely infuriating. Anyway, so clearly still really into music. Did you have a lull because uh, you've? How old is your child now? If you don't mind me asking. He's six. Just turned six. And that, I'd say, has changed what I'm listening to now in a way that's really interesting, I think. I mean, I say that, I've really oversold it. But, like, I am... I would sort of, just before I had him, I think I'd found, like, you know, some genres of music, always quite broad, what I'd listen to, all sorts, really. But I'd sort of settled into a few styles of music that I... Genres of music I probably listen to quite a lot. I quite like... Um, like Portishead would have been like one of my seminal bands. So music yeah, like yeah. that-ish with the odd like generally female vocalist pop into the odd thing, but not loads. Not No snobbery. Uh, let go of that a long time ago. But what's f- I think really interesting is that since I've had him... I then, like you say, there's a bit of a lull just because you yeah, fuck it's nursery rhymes, isn't it, really, for a, a year. Um, and then, um, now, what I love, it, it's taken until sort of five, six years old for there to be stuff that you can lo- really love doing together, but neither of us can sing. He's better than me, but really having a dance and a sing with him in the kitchen or the car. And him, like, now, he, you know, he'll learn all the words often with quite a few wrong 
and often to songs where it's quite inappropriate for him to know what the words could say about shagging or whatever. But um, <laughs> I love having a bellow yeah. along in the car with him. And what it means is because of the stuff he's into, I mean, I've coaxed him into a f- liking a few good things, but it means I know loads of the charts now for the first time since oh. probably my teens. Yeah. Like we have, we listen to, you know, today, Apple today's hits in the car. We just right. sort of sync it up to whatever's on my phone. And then I, you know, so I don't, I'm like, I'm aware of all sorts. Of, I, I know the words to some Ed Sheeran songs, buddy. Sorry. Whoa. Because of him. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I'll yours say seems it. To be I told on the you pulse. I wasn't a snob. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, we, I've kind of had the same, but we, um, I'm very selfish with music, so my yeah. kids have never uh, had a choice. I've never right. let them listen to kids' music. It's just they have just had to get into Oasis and the Beatles, and luckily they like it. And the one that I really like is they're really into Linkin Park. Nice. <laughs> Seeing a six-year-old head banging to Linkin Park is a wonderful thing. But um, I love it. Is it? There's nothing better though, is there? A little kid singing along and getting some of the words right, some wrong. Yeah. It's a wonderful and especially thing. if the lyrics are a little bit saucy, like um, I got ge- I got recommended some music. I did silly couch to five k in one of the lockdowns. Um, uh-huh. r- yeah, well running done. is my I love other exercise, but running is my nemesis. And um, somebody recommended me some like upbeat music, and so I got really into Dua Lipa. Heard of her? Yes, I have actually. I don't okay, know. Good. I don't know. Yeah, I couldn't name but, the song, but I have because it was on my play playlist. <laughs> She, it was what would come on, on my phone, so in the car. So my son let the lyrics of this song, and he, at the time he was only four, and he was singing, If you are under him, you ain't getting over him. And I was like, ah, that's a really filthy one for a four. He's got no idea what it means, but yeah. With a, with a slight sassy voice as well. Yeah, really. He definitely does sassy, and he does a sassy face. Yeah, when he's singing along. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I yeah, because that's the thing. When they, you, there's no chance of you going to live gigs when they're young. No, and you can't afford to buy albums when they're first out. You have to wait till they're on offer. You know, yeah. six pound max. Don't know about you. Yeah. It's my limit. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm still buying albums. Um, and then Me so too. there's a, yeah, you don't get you don't listen to music for a while and then you start coming back to it. But what? So when when did you first start getting into music? What age were you? Do you remember um, the first? My parents are very... They, they would listen to music of an evening instead of watching telly. Really? Maybe half the time, yeah. But not as that, that makes them sound like real musos, and they're not. I mean, they loved some brilliant music and some deeply shit, like, boomer, bad shit, like, simply red <laughs> level oh, shit. God. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, c- crowded out. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Whoa, whoa. I like him. I like him. I'll do, say it. Do not put I simply like red and crowded house in the same Sorry. sentence. I've Hello. seen crowded house. At a fest- I, t- I said yes to a festival that was about 50p for the gig because they were on ages oh, ago. Oh, good on you. I'm a massive yeah. crowded house fan. Me too. And we the the abuse we get. <clears throat> the abuse we get. I listen. I listen to um. Whatever that album is, with it looks like a load of wood's been nailed together on the front. I listened to a wood bit face. of that the other day. Woodface. Yeah, um, yeah. Bl- you cannot go wrong if you like a catchy tune and a melody. You can't argue. Yeah. I, I'd say they're in my top ten like favorite bands. I would. I'd say twenty for Easy. me. But yeah, they're good. If you don't like them, so I don't know I, what it is. Yeah, I've had this discussion with people. You say crowded house, they go whoa. They've been lumped into some kind of. <clears throat> Late eighties, cheesy lumped, pop yeah, or something. Yeah, they've been lumped in they're with not. Simply Red, haven't they? They have actually, and that's bad. And with Simply yeah. Red, like I don't think you can justify much about Simply Red, but he did have a really good voice. Um, and my dad said, and my dad is like the grumpiest, most cynical old toad. But he was like, he's he's a cunt. He's a, he's got like he's a spinach toothed cunt, and he hates him. But he was like, but if you'd ever seen him live, which he did at some point, he was like, his voice blows your heart off. Yeah, like, mm-hmm. oh, all right, you know. And I think that happens quite a bit, doesn't it? When people are like, I don't know. Like I remember going to see Travis live and being like, I might as well be watching the radio. This is, there's no. Sorry if I've really upset you, but it really felt like I was watching some businessman talk. Like it was so soulless. 
Well, Maybe Travis. they were at a point in their career where they just had enough. Yeah, it was bad. It was. I mean, it was pitch perfect. It, it sounded exactly the same as it sounded on the radio, but they they had they were a charisma vortex. Oh, um, sorry. What year would this have been? So sorry. I hope Travis never listened to this. Long time ago, um, it was at a Reading festival, so it would have been when I was sixteen or eighteen. So it would have been two thousand one or nineteen ninety nine. Oh no, that would have been that would have been them at their peak. That would have oh, been man who. Well, maybe that's it. Band. Do you know what they might have been like? Date a hundred out of a two hundred date tour, and they were bored. Like it could have been that. And it was a festival gig. Yeah. Yeah, think think how much you've just mentioned how much you enjoy a gig at a festival. <laughs> so maybe, maybe Travis, that's... I'd take it back. Like but, we've all been there. We've all yeah, had the yeah. we've all had the ones where we're dead behind the eyes and we've had to phone it in. And I've got there's no you'll have no judgment from me. Yeah. So you so the so your your parents listen to music at night. So they'd be doing yeah. stuff. So, but they listen to good stuff on. as well. Yeah, 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 cooking and that. Although sometimes me and dad would not with mum, actually, but with dad, we'd if he'd had a few jars, which was most night. Well, let's be clear, every night. Um, yeah. I we'd we would just listen to music and sing along to it in the kitchen. Sometimes uh, so always the kitchen in it. The else. kitchen's best for music. Kitchen's Why is that? Best for music. Manic Street Preachers, Gold for the Soul. That album we yeah. screamed along to, and I loved it when I was a kid because there's a song that went, "We don't want your fucking love." Called Roses in the Hospital, and I loved it because it had a big swear in. Oh, a big yeah. swear. <laughs> yeah, I loved a song with a big swear when I was my son's age. I love. There's nothing better than uh, it breaking out into a party. And when you live in a share yeah. house and a party occurs in a kitchen, oh, just what well, it starts yes. off that you just stood around with music on in the background. Totally. And then uh, yeah. I love, I love this song. And then uh, someone walking in to clean the hotel room. Should have put the love do it. not disturb sign on. Um, <coughs> all it takes is someone to go, I love this song. Bang. It's a party in a kitchen. Yes. It's a great feeling. It's a great feeling. So that fact, there's not many people have that though, Jess. I don't remember I that. With um, uh, yeah. you know, my parents listened to music, but I don't remember singing along to music in the kitchen with my dad. Yeah, I remember him singing along on his own in quite an angry <laughs> way to Bob Dylan with cider. <laughs> that's that's how he that's how he reacted with music. That's how he had. It's an emotion. very much a solo activity for him. And then right. um, so so you listen to music when you were younger. Your parent is in the house quite a lot. And then do you remember yeah. the first thing that you thought, well, this is mine, this. This is mine, oh, I found this. I remember this. the first music I bought. I used to listen to the Top 40 and I used to record it off yeah. the radio or onto a tape cassette and then uh, edit it up onto another tape cassette and make my edit own radio up. shows. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I remember that. Well, you, you'd just play it back edit. again while another tape's recording. Yeah. And then you'd just pause. And then with the yeah. only music, you could record and speak like you're a radio DJ. And then I'd swap those tapes with my cousin Dan and he'd make them for me. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about yeah. that. And you try and edit out as much of the uh, actual radio DJ talking. Yeah. Oh, no, none of that would be in it. Yeah. You swap yourself in for the DJ. Yeah. But it's quite yeah. funny when you actually get... I remember getting albums and I'd listen to a recording on tape so much that the radio DJ's bullshit before it became sort of part of the song. Yeah. yeah you remembered yeah. it so much. <laughs> but you uh, you decided that you were the DJ, so yeah, you recorded it's a yourself. Big ed, already a comedian's ego. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I could do a better job <laughs> at 16 <laughs> than this trained professional. Um, yeah. So then what? So what was it from that that you remember... I had horrible, I did have horrible, t oh, well, so on the cool side, the first album I bought from Woolworths was 100% rap one, which was <laughs> fucking cool, actually, it was full of like Della Soul, oh, okay. uh, Informer, all that kind of like, oh yeah, 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 but I actually had like that white lines, it had loads of absolute like 90s bangers on it, um, um, like the shittest thing on it was boom, boom, shake the room. <laughs> yeah, still <laughs> a tune it, it, though, wasn't it? Still a tune, and honestly, like it was, it was a brilliant. It's a timeless album. <laughs> but the first single I bought was, I'm afraid, 
to say Cotton Eye Joe. Oh, good yeah. God. <laughs> yeah, real bad. And singles wise, I went, I, I've i got no, I've got, I have only shame, really. I've, yeah, I've shame bought, singles. Um, no, 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 there's no lyric limits. <laughs> there's no lyrics. I really said lyrics, yeah. <laughs> Freud that's, and slip. That's, what's, yeah. that's what singles are about. Yeah, they like, and they you know. used to, back then, before you just bought the song digitally, to sort of make you feel like you're getting your money's worth, the B-sides. I mean, most singles then had maybe eight other versions of the same song on it. Yeah. So if you just put that CD on, you'd be listening to eight, seven other longer, worse versions of the already terrible one song yeah. that you'd purchased. <laughs> yeah, you had to go and stop it before it carried on. Yeah. You had to put one on repeat. Yeah. You ain't going past one. And that, at the time, you needed quite a high-tech CD player for as well, yeah, yeah, which we didn't have. Yeah, you had the radio edit. Yeah. <laughs> what you thought? Yeah. What you thought, yeah, I could see why you did edit this. <laughs> yeah. I should have edited it out of my life and not bought it. But singles allowed you to buy. So if I've still got loads of CD singles, and I wouldn't want people to see some of them. Yeah, I've just kept them to myself. Have you kept them? Because I've let them go. Oh, I've, got, I've, I've only got, got maybe ones. ten to fifteen CDs left. I've recently moved house and had, I think, again, like every time I move, I have a massive cull because I just think, when actually am I ever? And the worst thing is the ones you go, no, I do want to keep that forever, are the most scratched up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I am. Um, oh yeah, I've got some ones that recent ones as well. Um, yeah, one ninety nine though CD single from Woolworths, yeah. and uh, that that's again. I don't have to. Go, I don't have to go on about this, but that's why Oasis was so good. You got three other songs that most bands would die to have on their album anyway. Yeah. So, uh, what was the first album that you remember buying though? That proper like you 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 bought the um, what was it? Rap. Yeah, hundred percent rap one. Hundred percent rap. <laughs> yeah, don't one lit lit. But yeah, what was the first then album of a actual band? Oh God, probably. <laughs> oh, I mean, I um, if you just turn off the call, it's fine. But it it was probably Jacadimus and Pliers. <laughs> <laughs> was it really? Yeah. yeah, saw them live with my mum and dad. Oh. Wow. Paul Art Centre. Yeah. Yeah. Late nineties. How old would no, you be? Early nineties. Early nineties. Yeah. Early nineties. Hang on, I you would have been really young then. Yeah. Early early to mid nineties, I was about ten. Oh well that's forgivable. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Don't be too hard on your ten year old self. Yeah. This still sounds like this is um but this still sounds like this is influenced by your parents. You're going with your parents. It's true, actually. Come on, yeah. So let's find out. Let's find out about. Let's find out me. about Jess here. Oh, what, I still what? really. I loved reggae. <laughs> Did you? Yeah, I had a hundred percent reggae one, two, and three as well. I mean, when you when you get into a genre of music, though, you go, you commit. I go hundred percent rap, hundred percent reggae. Yeah, I go a hundred percent. Never fifty percent on any of these I'd bands. I'd never have bought fifty percent reggae. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't know who's buying that. Someone who's not I sure they're in an Edinburgh it. show that now. 50% reggae. 50% um, reggae. He's got some reggae <laughs> tunes and they're just, uh, then there's just yeah. the odd Coldplay in the middle of it. Yeah. <laughs> the Every other tune bands. is reggae yeah. and then it's just other. <laughs> we got yeah, 50% Adele. reggae. I don't want to go full in. No, only 50% <laughs> reggae. <laughs> Start selling that. Oh, 12. They've done well. Yeah. So then, what was what what was then the first gig you went to on your own without your parents? Uh, e seventeen. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Oh, this My is mates. comical. Shackademus Pliers, E seventeen. E seventeen, Bournemouth International Centre. Um, Ooh, the big. big. You call it if you're local, big. And um, they um, smoke a lot of smoke, and then they come down from the ceiling on ropes. That might have been my first orgasm as well. E17, no, come I'm down joking, from the ceiling they, on ropes. Yeah, come down from the ceiling on ropes. It was before Brian had that thing with the potato. It's when they were at their absolute peak. I think yeah. I went with my friend called Hayley. Um, I say friend, she was also my number one bully. But we... 
number one. We, you had them ranked. Well, no, I didn't have them ranked. She wasn't really, but she just sort of was the leader of that little friendship group and would quite often banish me. Oh. Yeah, I really liked to take that as well, but they didn't come to Dorset. <laughs> <laughs> you were limited by your music options when yeah, you lived yeah, around Dorset. Yeah. yeah. Bournemouth International Centre, was that your nearest sort of big venue then? Yeah. Yeah. Right. E17 were the well. only ones. To... And that only yeah. they would do it if they were absolutely promised ropes. Yeah. From the ceiling. Uh, for, they, they, they would only play venues with a full overhead rig. <laughs> yeah. And they played the sound of helicopter chop, chop, chops as if they were being dropped down from helicopters. And we believed it. We could have believed they were heli- helicopters. Oh, for, enough dry ice, you'll believe anything. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. So then that, that was in your, I'm thinking that's your teens, was it? Yeah, must have been, yeah. Right, Around and then, puberty. And then, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's making some very pubescent choices. E17 (laughs) dropping from the ceiling helped with your pubic development. (laughs) Yes! Uh, I could feel things growing as they were dropping. (laughs) (laughs) And then, uh, and then, so then, uh, have you got now, have you got something that you're proud to talk about when you got into your late teens? Oh, God. Um... Or is it just... No, I don't think... I, I think the only cool music I liked was still, like, parentally influenced by oh, okay. then. Like, it would be, like... Like, Otis Redding and... Stuff like that. Like, just sort of cool... Bits of cool Northern Soul. Stuff like that. That was the cool stuff I liked. When I got to uni, I realised I hadn't, like, found a cool liking of any band. I quite liked Blur. Sorry! Yeah. That's um... Right. Yeah, great. More, more than Oasis but I really <laughs> loved them I loved them yes I went to see them at a Reading Festival and um, I sort of was so green and naive that they opened with Tender and I went right up to the front and um, then they did that song too yeah. and when I you... nearly died in the yeah. wash pit yeah I had to crawl out I had like bruises and it was I was terrified. I think I was only 16. Well, if <laughs> I was make, so scared. If it makes you feel any better, I was 21 and I was a bit bigger then, as in I was, I'm very skinny now. I was a bit chunkier then when I was yeah. about 21, 22. Saw Oasis at Finsbury Park, got right down the front. I was on my own, went on my own. Went yeah. right down the front thinking, I'm getting down the front for this. Didn't even last yeah. till Oasis. Charlatans, come on. And I just ended up at the back going, no, that's too much. Who would go to music for that? There's no need... I mean, oh. I got elbowed in the face. Yeah, I felt like that after the blur experience. I felt really like, well, oh, I'm never going in a mosh pit again. Yeah, I, um, yeah, I absolutely made that decision. I was just at the back like a kid, like a little kid that got involved yeah. in a football game with bigger boys. <laughs> oh, <laughs> tragic. Um, um, but then I think, it, again, like a blur I did like by myself. I had a, a boyfriend around then that got me into... Uh, well, at first I hated it and then I grew to love it. But he was into heavier stuff like System of a Down. I learned to love. So by the time I got to uni, I was in like uh, Marilyn Manson was coming out with great stuff then. Um, yeah, that kind of stuff. But then I didn't stick. That kind of stuff didn't stick. I still really enjoy it if I hear it now. But like I didn't then follow their work forever and ever and ever and keep buying music like that. Yeah, you kind of, um, you have to be in the mood for it. Yeah, totally. And like, I don't know, I think in terms of like the music that I know that I unabashedly love, I quite like quite, quite sad stuff. Like I love like big voices. I quite like music that's a bit mo- like moving. I really love, there's a band called Saint Saviour who I love. I love Florence and the Machine. I love Portishead are my favourite, favourite, and anything Beth Gibbons has done on her own, the lead singer of that. Um, Yeah, like big, like, warbly, sad music. Like, everyone I've ever been out with has been like, oh, God, this is very you, this. If I... I I think that's a good thing. Yeah, I suppose, yeah. If you could put music on someone and go, oh, this is you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it'll be like something that like rips your heart out and stamp stamps on it. I'm into that. <laughs> <laughs> well, what what would be your go if you're uh, you've had a bad gig, you're upset, yeah. 
mm. really, really think that, what, I can't even be a comedian. Have you got a, is there a band or a song even, a band <sighs> maybe that you put on driving home? To make yourself sadder or to put yeah, yourself Yeah, to make yourself up. in more. Um, I don't think you can go wrong with a bit of Joni Mitchell. No, good call. For that, Blue Album. Or, um, oh, God, I mean, there's quite a few options, actually. Yeah, I think I'll stick with that. Yeah, what was it, if, if you got, when you've had a good gig, you drive her back and you're euphoric. Yeah. Mine's obviously Oasis. <laughs> Sometimes Stone Roses. Do you know, I do this, sort of, I do the sort of opposite to you, though, I think. I listen to the really euphoric music on the way in yeah. to help sort of flip the switch into really wanting to be there and being excited about it. Um, and actually, like, it would have been, uh, like, Lizzo. Yeah, or something yeah. like that. Um, but now, because of my son, I just put on Apple Today's Hits. Do you really? Because it's almost all upbeat. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, do. you probably, you probably like this. Then I've got into this because yeah. of my my kids. Yeah. The weekend. They're great. They're oh, great. I am very really poppy, but um, yeah, really into it. My my son knows all the words to that as well. Really oh, got into it. Love it. Yeah, it, when they ask you to put it on, when they ask, well, I love it when they ask for a song, but they've not, they don't know the song title. They just pick a bit from it and go yeah. with that. Can you oh, put on? Oh, they know if it's come on the screen in your car, they'll, he'll, my son will be like, I want that one with like a blue square, and then there's a lady, and then she got like a lady in a bikini, and then there's a she's next to a car, and you're like, oh, fuck, no. and now I'm like, oh right, you want that one? It's called Mimi twenty four five. Okay, <laughs> like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to piece together what it is. That's the same when they want one episode of uh, Lego Ninjago. Oh, they go to the one with the serpent. I'm like, fuck. Oh, there's 58 God. episodes. How am I going to yeah, find you that? You need to learn to find this yourself now. Actually, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So to finish up here, if you, um, if, um, if you, your producer have, has just put a note in saying the weekend is just one person, not a band. So we've we done are it again. 100 percent one all on we've that. We've done it again. <laughs> yeah. Ah. <laughs> oh. Sorry, I interrupted my big last end question. That's all right. I mean, it, it was a late, it was a late equaliser. <laughs> yeah, right it at was the end there. Thrilling. Lizzo, the weekend, yeah. both individual people. Yeah. Well, that's what we will take away from this. Um, just to finish up here, one album you've got to pick. One album. If you said to somebody, "Oh, I love this album," and they said, "Ah, oh, can't stand it," you'd think, "Well, that, that, I, I don't think I can ever look at you the same ever again." What album would that be? Oh my crumbs, this is really hard. Ah, oh, it's so hard. Um, oh god. Oh god, you can't say a best off of this. That's so uncool. <laughs> you just said that out loud you should have thought that no sorry you can't say a best of it's going to be Can 100% I? something isn't it yeah it's tempting oh I think okay then like essential collection some kind of best of of Tina Turner <laughs> <laughs> no you can't say that I can I've said it now you've said best of Tina Turner yeah okay okay if you don't like the best of Tina Turner you don't realise it yet, but you've actually already died. <laughs> In your mind. And the yeah. good thing about Tina Turner, we're absolutely certain that is one person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When, when did they yeah, start doing that? The documentaries, it's definitely one lady. Yeah, we yeah, should be to blame for that. When did they start doing that? <laughs> That's their fault, that is. They've called yeah, themselves yeah, many people. Yeah. If you're one person, use your name. Don't start going... Yeah, come on. Yeah, weekend. Anyway, Jess, it's been bloody lovely to talk to you. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. See you out there. See you out there. A podcast from producer Paul, Dakota, UK.